Top Zodiac Researcher's Favorite Suspect, Richard Gajkowski. It's remarkable that one of the most perplexing mysteries of the 20th century hasn't been solved up to the present day, yet it is. The identity of the Zodiac remains a mystery despite countless amateur investigators and a never-ending list of new people of interest. Welcome to Bad Things. Let us give you a quick recap on the Zodiac mystery. The Zodiac Killer, who only ever referred to himself as the Zodiac, is a serial killer who is responsible for the deaths of at least five individuals and the severe injuries of two more. He was active in the late 1960s and perhaps the early 1970s, and to this day, nobody knows who he was. Much like the identity of Jack the Ripper, for example. All five of his verified killings took place in Northern California, in the metropolitan region around San Francisco. The cities of Benicia, Vallejo, Napa County, and San Francisco were also targeted in the assaults. All verified homicides occurred between 1968 and 1969. When he executed his victims, the killer used both a firearm and a knife. These are the people that had been verified as being attacked by him. David Arthur Faraday, 17, and Betty Lou Jensen, 16. December 20th, 1968. Lake Herman Road in Benicia. Michael Reno Magoo, 19. And Darlene Elizabeth Ferrin, 22. July 4th, 1969. Blue Rock Springs Park in Vallejo. Brian Calvin Hartnell, 20. And Cecilia Ann Shepard, 22. September 27th, 1969. Lake Berryessa in Napa County. Paul Lee Stein, 29, October 11, 1969, Presidio Heights neighborhood in San Francisco. Only Michael Reno Magoo and Brian Calvin Hartnell were able to survive the assaults and offer a thorough description of the suspect. The San Francisco Bay Area Zodiac Killer is most known for the cryptic remarks and lengthy letters he sent to the press. These letters were signed by the Zodiac. In addition to the cryptograms, he usually added a symbol like a crosshair, which made his messages even more fascinating. People have been interested by the Zodiac Killer case for nearly five decades, and there are countless probable suspects. We have covered some of the most plausible persons of interest on bad things, so check out our Zodiac video so you can decide who you have pegged for this infamous serial killer. One researcher has been obsessed with this case for decades, and has dedicated his life to unmasking the Zodiac. Tom Voigt Born in Southern California, Voigt relocated to Oregon as a child. He studied journalism and radio broadcasting at Mount Hood Community College and classical guitar at Lewis and & Clark, and worked as a morning drive-time announcer for CBS Radio and KUFO. In 1998, he started ZodiacKiller.com from an apartment off Northeast Broadway, building the site by himself with a little understanding of HTML design. Voigt, over the years, has put forward many persons of interest, but now seems to be settling on one in particular, Richard Gajkowski. Richard Gajkowski, who was born on a farm in rural South Dakota to Catholic parents, served as an army medic and dabbled in Dakota politics before moving to the San Francisco Bay Area in 1963. He was a reporter and the editor in the East Bay before temporarily working for a newspaper in Albany, New York, before returning to San Francisco. His hippie newspaper colleagues committed him to the Napa State Mental Hospital against his will in 1971. Later, he was diagnosed with an unidentified mental condition and treated at Mount Zion Hospital in San Francisco. He would later manage an independent storefront cinema in the Mission District. Gajkowski's employment at the Martinez Morning News Gazette placed him in close proximity to the Lake Herman Road and Blue Rock Springs murder sites, both of which were located on remote back roads known only to locals and were just minutes from Gajkowski's residence. He documented a Lake Berryessa jailbreak with strange parallels to the future Zodiac assault. When he returned from Albany, he became editor-in-chief of the San Francisco Good Times, a Haight-Ashbury alternative weekly newspaper. 
The newspaper used the property at 1830 Fell Street as a switchboard, a type of pre-digital location for messages to be transmitted and received, as well as for products to be picked up or dropped off, only yards away from the residence of later Zodiac victim Paul Stein. Four days before the murder of Stein, Good Times conducted a book drive. The story about the event was bylined by Gajkowski. Carol, the sister of Stein, informed Voigt that she recognized Gajkowski as a mourner at her brother's burial. A victim's sister has alleged for decades that one of Darlene Ferrin's ex-boyfriends was a journalist called Richard. In the 2008 documentary This Is the Zodiac Speaking, released as a bonus on the Blu-ray version of Fincher's film, victim Mike Magoo, who suffered the same attack in which Ferrin was murdered, describes being chased by a man just before... I thought he drove off and drove away, but he came back later and shot us. She told me it was a friend of hers, and he was jealous. She mentioned his name. She referred to him as Richard. All of the circumstantial evidence against Gajkowski is perfectly laid out by a Reddit contributor. A sister of victim Darlene Ferrin has claimed for decades that one of her sister's former boyfriends was a journalist named Richard. Ferrin's husband worked at the Albany Times Union newspaper. Gajkowski worked in the same building at the rival Albany Knickerbocker News. In August 1973, four years after Ferrin was killed by the Zodiac, the Times Union received a letter from someone claiming to be the Zodiac. Magoo, who survived the same attack in which Ferrin was murdered, describes being chased by a man just before, I thought he drove off and drove away, but he came back later and shot us. She told me it was a friend of hers, and he was just jealous. She mentioned his name. She referred to him as Richard. In 1969, 1970, and 1971, Gajkowski was a member of an anti-police, pro-violence, counterculture newspaper and commune in San Francisco called Good Times, which had a history of radical ideology. Between Zodiac's debut in July 1969 until the Good Times folded in 1973, the Zodiac mailed 15 letters. Never did he mail a letter on a Wednesday. Wednesday was production day for the weekly Good Times newspaper. The Good Times switchboard was located only yards from the residence of Zodiac victim Paul Stein on Fell Street in San Francisco. Stein's sister Carol told Voigt she recognized Gajkowski as having attended her brother's funeral. At the very time the Zodiac wrote his only letter to the Vallejo Times Herald, Gajkowski's best friend Bob worked at that very newspaper. Once Gajkowski came aboard, the Good Times newspaper ran free ads for such unlikely events as performances of the Mikado, a Zodiac favorite. Zodiac sometimes quoted from the Mikado in his letters. On March 13, 1971, the Zodiac sent a letter to the Los Angeles Times and didn't write again for almost three years. Gajkowski was diagnosed with a mental illness and began treatment at Mount Zion Hospital in San Francisco at the same time for three years. When the Zodiac re-emerged in 1974 with letters referring to recent movie releases, Gajkowski was operating a storefront theater in the Mission District of San Francisco. Nancy Slova, the police dispatch operator who took a call from the Zodiac immediately after the Ferrin Magoo attack, heard an audio recording of Gajkowski's voice in 2009 and identified Gajkowski as Zodiac. The California Department of Justice determined that Gajkowski's handwriting had consistencies with Zodiac's handwriting and more samples of Gajkowski's printing were requested. Goldcatcher found printing that he felt could have belonged to Gajkowski, but those samples were determined to not be a match. There was not enough probable cause for an arrest or search warrant, and the investigation ended. He died in 2004. And yes, I believe he really is it. There are so many arguments and proofs that he is actually the Zodiac Killer, and the sketch looks so much like him. Gajkowski was brought to Voigt's notice by Blaine T. Smith, sometimes known as Blaine or Blaine Blaine, in his business and personal life. Gajkowski and Blaine were both members of the Good Times newspaper collective. After inheriting a considerable amount of money, 
in the early 1970s and leaving for Crete, Blaine returned to the Bay Area in the 1980s and lived out of a camper van. Blaine became certain a former co-worker, Guy Kowski, was the Zodiac Killer about the time Robert Graysmith's first book on the Zodiac Killer was published in 1986. The assertions were supported by audio-taped remarks and corroborating proof. Blaine contacted the FBI and the San Francisco Police Department and requested that they investigate Guy Kowski. With the exception of Ken Narlo, the Napa County detective briefly investigated Guy Kowski before his surveillance attempts were thwarted by Ferrin's sister. In general, the authorities refused to examine Guy Kowski. Guy Kowski was dismissed by the FBI because he claimed to have been in Europe at the time of the first murder, despite having lost his passport. On Facebook, Blaine uploaded a 2012 letter made on their behalf to San Francisco Chief of Police, Greg Sir by Bay Area Attorney Jay Gohl, who argues Blaine was discriminated against by authorities in the 1980s because, in part, they are transgender and were living in a van and considered to be homeless at the time. As with all other persons of interest in this perplexing case, the keyboard detectives on Reddit aren't as convinced as Voight is. This contributor put it as brutally as possible, but with some merit. As I see it, the problem with Gajkowski as a suspect is that there isn't any there. The evidence literally consists of nothing more than a long list of cosmic coincidences involving numerology, recurrence of common names, letters selectively picked out of ciphertext, etc. This, of course, is common with a lot of popular suspects. Zodiac's use of ciphers seems to have led a lot of people to think the case is some kind of esoteric puzzle rather than a murder case. They look for hidden meanings in everything. And once you go looking for that, you're sure to find it, even when it's not really there. We are sure that Richard Gajkowski will not be the last person of interest in this case. Be sure to hit the notification bell for more Zodiac videos. Hit the subscribe button, like button, and notification bell, and share our channel for our up-and-coming true crime videos.